Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to paint some new-ish skeletons and we're going to use some noosh. It's speed painting skeletons, it's going to be fun. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. Long time viewers of the channel will know that I have a very large Tomb Kings army. In fact, I spent years back during Warhammer Fantasy uh, painting up just immense amounts of Tomb Kings. I think I had something like 13,000 points uh, when Warhammer Fantasy came to a close. I just, I loved everything about them. I had bought Tomb Kings initially when they came out in 2004. So I have lots of skeletons and archers. I have a ton of sphinxes, more Ushabti than maybe anybody. I don't know. I have a lot. And so when this box, oh boy, that thing, it's heavy, uh, arrived at my door, I was pretty excited. Now, ironically, the one thing I don't have a ton of is regular skeleton warriors. I was always more fascinated by the big snakes, the chariots, everything like that. I have more than 20 chariots, more than 20 Shabti, all these kinds of things. And so I thought this would be a good chance with this new box full of the same old models that I had uh, to do some more experimentation with the skeletons. So today we're going to speed paint up some skeletons. We're going to try to make them look nice, but the goal is to get 20 skeletons, a nice size unit, done fast. And so we're going to also use Pro Acryl's newest product, Noosh, uh, to do that. So let's head over to the desk and uh, we're going to basically speed our way through these. All right, I'm going to start with just, they're all primed black. Nothing special, this is just black primer. When I'm doing this tutorial, there's no airbrush, there's no nothing like that. We're going to keep it simple. I want to make sure this is something that everybody else could do. And so I start by just doing a nice heavy dry brush of brown all over them. Now here I'm using the warm brown from Pro Acryl because it'll be a great base tone for our skeletons as we build them up. And most anything you could do with an airbrush for this kind of thing, like for just base coating them, and as we're going to eventually sort of pseudo zenithal them with later steps, you can do all of this with a nice soft uh, makeup brush uh, for a dry brush as well. And so that's what I do here. Now this first coat, I'm working very thick. I don't wipe much off the brush. As you can see, I'm really just slapping it around the model. Um, all of my models, by the way, are set up on paint sticks. So you can go to your local hardware store and you can just uh, get these sticks. They're basically usually free from like the Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever's near you. And then you just uh, take some double-sided tape, whoosh, run it down there, pop, 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 stick all your models to it. Now you've got them all in a nice row, easy to work on, especially when you're trying to do speed painting tasks like this. Um, I know it seems silly, but it's really nice to just be able to move around whole like stacks of, of almost 20 models basically uh, at one clutch. So, uh, once they're all brown and we're good to go there, then it's time for the next step. The next step is I'm going to take some vampiric flesh. Uh, now, and this is the thing, when you're painting skeletons, do not limit yourself to a color that says bone. I really cannot emphasize this enough. Things that look anywhere in this range, but that have more browns or yellows or flesh tones in them will all be fine and look good. And in fact, will add a lot of interesting tonal variation and hue to your skeleton. So in this case, Vampiric Flesh is this wonderful warm, it's got a little bit of orange in it, it's great. And so we just dry brush that. But when I'm doing this, this is still a relatively heavy dry brush, but I'm working specifically down. So my dry brush is always pulling down. I don't go back up. I only come down the model, not back up. And so lots of sweeps just over them from the top. Again, just basically turning the skeletons, you know, sort of white from above. If you flip them over, you can still see a decent amount of that brown in the recesses uh, and in the sort of undershaded parts. One note here is I do work <clears throat> um, rather quickly, but I am still building it up. You'll notice I don't have a huge amount of paint on the dry brush for this step. I'm relying on hitting the model many times, not one pass to deploy a lot of the paint. I think that's where a lot of people can sometimes go wrong. The other thing I'll just quickly note here is that in all these dry brushing steps, I'm not using a paper towel. I'm using these specialized wipes that you can buy uh, for nail polish. 
Um, they're really soft and only moderately absorbent, so they actually just sort of take the paint without sapping all of the liquid out. I really like them as a wipey for dry brushing. Um, my wife gave them to me, and they're excellent for this purpose. Um, I'll link those down in the description so you can check them out. Once that step is done, that then brings us to uh, basically uh, a, a, a closer to white, very light dry brush. So here I'm using off-white. And I just give them a very light touch, focusing really mostly on above. So this is their heads, their shoulders, their arms, the kneecaps, that when their their knees are jutting out a lot. I don't know why these guys are always, they're always just like hot stepping, like they're in the middle of a jazz routine. Um, but basically those very raised areas. With all that done, now we've got some skeletons. They look fine, but we can go a step farther because they still look a little rough. There's still too much, a little of that dark brown black from the primer still showing through in a lot of areas. We want to give them a nice coat uh, of actual tone, some warmth. These are meant to be skeletons in the desert, by the way. So now we're going to do some noosh. All right, so the noosh. Uh, this is a new product from Pro Acryl, and it's basically a... Uh, meant to replace a, a sort of medium that it very much extends working time. It is uh, not really like a very runny substance. It's a little bit more like a thick medium. And I'm going to mix it here. I started 3 to 1, but I actually found the right ratio was 4 to 1. So I'm going to mix it again with the warm brown, the original. But that warm brown is going to function differently when put over the whites that I've dry brushed as opposed to the original black of my primer. And it's going to create a nice, nicer gradient, especially down in the recesses and the shadows. So I mix basically the paint to the noosh at a uh, four drops of noosh to one drop of paint. And then you clench because we're just going to slap it on there. And so I just coat this bad boy in this, uh, in this sort of noosh paint mix. And you can see it looks like I just ruined all of my good work, uh, but I didn't. I then take some makeup sponges and simply wipe it away. Now, I let it sit. I experimented with how long to let it sit to get the effect. And I found at the 4 to 1 ratio, I wanted it to sit for basically no more than about a minute. Maybe two minutes at most. And I found that was a pretty good amount of time. Now, the more noosh you mix in, the longer the working time will be. And even uh, this, I'm wiping this away with a dry makeup sponge at the moment. And I can pull most of it off. Really, the biggest problem is actually getting in some of the tight spaces on some of these models. If I was working on like a space marine or something where it's much more open and exposed, it would be a lot easier. But uh, here I found <clears throat> it was really easy to just get in there and wipe it away with the dry thing. When I moved to working on all the guys on the stick, I did five at a time and then wiped them and then five at a time and then wiped them and five at a time and then wiped them and, wiped them and so on. And I found that was a good, sort of, a, that gave me a naturally correct working time. I'll also note with the noosh that not only can you get this nice clean wipe away, and then as you're wiping it, you do, um, if you let it dry that about a minute or so, you get this really nice gradient down to where the paint remains. It actually gives you a pretty smooth transition down in there if wiped correctly. But if you have any rough transitions, I was also able to go in with the brush, just a wet brush. So I just go in with a wet large brush and I can then clean other places up. Streak it down, take it out, remove it, wipe the brush on something, get it wet again, wipe away. I found that working time was more in like the five to ten minute range. I could do that with a wet brush. Uh, so it's still got, I still got quite a bit of, of working time out of that. Um, there like you couldn't dry uh, wipe it away anymore but now you could just really use the uh, the wet brush, and we were good to go. Um, so, all in all, I think the noosh, and this really isn't meant to be a uh, full noosh review. Um, you know, we'll probably talk about it some more in future videos as I'm going to continue experimenting with it, but I thought I'd let you join me on the experimentation, and we'd speed paint some skeletons at the same time. Um, but all in all, I really liked it. It had a nice effect. I'm keen to play with it some more, and I think it really could replace streaking grime or something similar uh, without working with any kind of toxic, harsh, stinky chemicals. So that's actually really cool and got me pretty excited. All right, so now it's time to just finish these bad boys out. Um, with most of the bone done, and I built these skeletons as kind of the simplest I could to minimize additional 
uh, non-sensory and doodads and bajangles and things. Uh, so, you know, I, I like to keep it easy. Um, but I did go back in and I gave it a light dry brush of, again, the Vampiric Flesh plus a little of the Off-White, so kind of a 50-50 mix of the two. Again, just focusing on really like the top of the head, the shoulders, knuckles, things like that, just to make sure that, um, that all those areas were picked out and there was some brightness to the edge of it. What I did see with the noosh is just like with Streaking Grime, and this is true for oil washes, this is true for enamel uh, paints, this is true for working with the noosh, the lighter the color you're working over, the more likely there is to be some kind of staining effect just because you can't wipe everything away at the molecular level. Some amount of paint is going to seep into the, the chemical substrate of the, the lower level of paint. But this just gave it a little bit more pop. Uh, once that was done, then it was time to turn to the other areas. Uh, the, when I originally did my Tomb King's army, I was using, I think, like Vallejo turquoise, basically. But now, in the modern age, we have contrast paints. Specifically, we have Achillean green, which I'm neither working on anything to do with Eidneth, nor anything is this paint green. It's a blue. It's a blue turquoise color. Uh, and I love it, and it's basically a perfect match. Uh, so all the spear halves basically get that, uh, the, any kind of little details. And then their shields are obviously going to be the turquoise. Um, a note on the shields themselves, uh, I wanted them to have a sort of sun bleached texture. So I actually just, as I was doing the original dry brushing with the, uh, vampiric flesh and the white, I just heavily stippled onto the shields first, the vampiric flesh around, then the off white then some more vampiric flesh around the thing, just very quickly just banging a large brush up and down the, the rank of the 20 of them on the, the sticks, or on the stick. And then when you put the Achillean uh, green over that, you get this wonderful like sun bleached blue effect. It looks like a car that sat out in the sun too long. I really like it as sort of a, an effect for textured paints. You'll see how it all looks in the end uh, when it all comes together. I then used some gold. Now, when I had done these guys originally, I used Vallejo liquid gold. So I actually did the same thing here just to keep them consistent with my original uh, paint scheme, as it were. Um, Vallejo liquid gold, as uh, Goobertown Hobbies recently pointed out, is really interesting because unlike most paints, it's not using a dye. It's using aluminum uh, pigment, but also copper and zinc pigment. So it's not using a dye to change anything. I don't really think there's anodization of the aluminum there. It's just using the combination of those three hyper finely ground pigments in an uh, alcohol-based suspension to create that sheen of fine metal. So it is a really interesting color. And I have to say, I, uh, you know, liquid gold is a real giant pain to work with. And God, did I run into that again. I really hate this paint because it dries so fast, it gets gummy instantly, you can't use water, you have to use alcohol, but it does produce a unique effect. I will completely give it that. With that step done, there's just a little bit of final cleanup and things like that. Um, so this is going back in with some of the vampiric flesh or the white, hitting some of those things. I took some uh, Grishnax sewer and hit some of the torn pieces on the shield or the deep slices, uh, things like that. Uh, and then, of course, doing the desert bases up, which was just sand and then washed and dry brushed. Uh, but all in all, these guys came together in about three hours of working time. So not bad. A full unit of 20 dudes. Uh, I don't know how many points they're worth. Not enough, um, but that's OK. Uh, <laughs> and so I was happy to get this unit on the table. And uh, yeah, that, that like. Basically, with those simple steps and less than three hours, I had a full unit of 20 ready to go. Let's take a look at the unit. Here they are. I mean, I really think they came out pretty fun and cool for being less than three hours of work on 20 models. That's really not too bad. Um, you know, I had 180 minutes roughly in that time period uh, divided by 20 models. That means I had not a lot of time, like less than 10 minutes per model, basically. So... Uh, for that amount of time, I'm actually pretty pleased with the result. Are they rough? Yeah, sure. But they're also a base troop you're supposed to have 40 or 80 of. And when they're all together in their beautiful rank and file, legitimately, I think they look pretty cool. And I always loved the, the look of Tomb Kings when they're all ranked up with their turquoise elements and stuff. And so I think these guys will fit into my old army and continue to build out my skeletons. 
So there you go. I'll probably do some more stuff with the old world in the future, so stay tuned if you want to see more of that painted. But if you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions about anything I did here, do not hesitate to put those down in the comments. I always answer every comment and question that's asked. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do so. You can share this video. Uh, if you want any of the products I mentioned down below, there are links down in the description where you can pick those up. Um, doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, if you pick up from Monument, you might even save some money uh, as I have a discount code down there. So do check that out for the noosh if you're interested in using this in the same way. Um, I also have merch down there and of course our Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. Uh, we'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.